Hello, I'm John Renanson. I'm the clinical lead for the Peninsula Cancer Alliance. And I'm here with my colleague, Joe Mays, who is uh, a GP and also the early diagnosis lead for the Peninsula Cancer Alliance. And we're here to talk to you today about the implementation of the QFIT test um, in the southwest of England. Uh, Joe, first of all, can you tell us um, what exactly the FIT test is? So John, QFIT is uh, a test for faecal occult blood, so hidden blood in the faeces. Uh, it's uh, an immunochemical test, so it uses antibodies to pick up uh, evidence of specifically human haemoglobin. So we don't need to ask patients to restrict their diet prior to using the test. Uh, it's different from what GPs would know as the old FOB test, which was a, a different sort of test called the GUIAC test. Uh, um, and it's, it's much more sensitive and specific. Okay. Um, how exactly does this fit in with the um, DG30 guidance? Okay, so DG30 is a bit of nice guidance that specifically relates to the use of QFIT. Um, our, our Peninsula project, um, uh, which is also being used elsewhere in the Southwest, uh, is really all about offering it to patients who used to be referred to in NG12. Uh, the patients we're offering it to are people who don't have rectal bleeding, but uh, are aged 50 or over with unexplained abdominal pain or weight loss, aged 50 to 60 with changes in their bowel habit or iron deficiency anemia, or over the age of 60 and with anemia without iron deficiency. We still want GPs to feel confident that they can diagnose conditions like irritable bowel syndrome in young adults without having to use this test. And certainly the NICE guidelines on IBS say you don't have to use tests for FOB to make that diagnosis. And can you tell us a little bit more about how the GPs will um, be able to use this test mm. with their patients? Sure, so for eligible patients, you will uh, take a, um, a pack containing um, the, the necessary test equipment, you'll fill in a request form that's inside the pack, and then you'll reinsert the form in the pack and hand it to the patient. Uh, the patient then, then um, collects a stool sample as per the instructions for them in the pack um, and they send it off to the laboratory. The laboratory sends a test back to the GP. Uh, so the GP should receive a test um, over the course of about seven days. Won't some of these patients already possibly have had faecal occult blood testing as part of the national screening programme? Uh, at the moment, the colorectal cancer screening programme uses the GUIAC, the old FOB test, but it's likely to be moving to using the QFIT test in the near future. Uh, the important thing to appreciate, whichever test it's using, is that the screening programme is screening a population without symptoms um, and that the threshold for considering the test to be normal or abnormal is different for, uh, between the screening test and the symptomatic QFIT test. So if a patient who's had a normal screening test comes to see you with new symptoms, it's really important that you forget the fact that they've had a screening test and that you consider the patient in the new. Okay. Um, and what will the results actually tell the GP? Well, um, the, the test is really sensitive for picking up the presence of blood in the, in the faeces. If the test is positive, we recommend that the GP should consider sending um, a suspected cancer referral to their local um, hospital. Um, if the test is negative, that means that you can be fairly certain that there wasn't blood in the faeces. Also very confident that uh, there isn't a colorectal cancer or a high-risk adenoma. The patient therefore probably doesn't need um, a referral for suspected colorectal cancer, but of course if the patient still has symptoms of concern, that doesn't mean they might need some other form of investigation and you should certainly consider seeking specialist advice. Okay. Um, what level of confidence can we have in these test results? The published studies vary a little bit. Um, the, uh, there is work that suggests that in the appropriate low-risk population, this test has a negative predictive value of 100%. Um, so um, it's hard to be certain um, how reproducible that is, but we certainly think GPs should be confident with a negative test that they're not dealing with a colorectal cancer. But I say again, if patients continue to have worrying symptoms, whether that suggests that they've got 
problem with the lower bowel or elsewhere in the abdomen, the GP should still seek specialist advice. When can we actually start using the test? Okay, so uh, packs should be sent out to the practices during June, uh, and that uh, applies across the whole of the South West. Um, and uh, C local CCGs should be communicating with practices about what to do with positive results, including probably recommending that they use a different set of uh, forms for suspected cancer.